In terms of the environment, global carbon emissions and uh, climate change is probably really just the tip of the iceberg. We're uh, facing a lot of environmental problems right across the board. And the political crisis is very clear, made very clear by Occupy right through the world. And I think that this has been the clearest kind of demonstration of the widespread feeling that representative democracy doesn't work and that people do want direct democracy and they want actually something that's quite different from what they've experienced before. I want to make one thing quite clear. None of the uh, contributors uh, argue that all that needs to be done is to uh, abolish money and to leave everything else uh, unchanged. I mean, that would be madness and would lead to a breakdown uh, in production and, and distribution. Now, if you've got a system based on uh, producing goods and services for sale on the market with a view to profit, you've got to have money. So no, none of us want to go back to barter. Now, as a socialist, I'm one of the contributors who wants to replace the present uh, capital system with a new system based on common ownership instead of ownership by the few, and with production directly to meet people's needs uh, instead of you know, say production for sale on the market with a view to profits. And in such a, a socialist or communist society, the, the two are actually the same. One was the phrase from Hegel, and if you know the Guy Debord Society of the Spectacle, most people know the cover where they're all looking at the cinema with their glasses on, and there's a Hegel phrase that defines money, where Hegel goes, money is the life of that which is dead moving within itself. And that seems to express the whole thing, that the sort of force of money, it's like a zombie taking over the whole world, that unless things are mediated through money, they don't exist, you know, look at the Olympics. And to me, you know, money is sort of seen as this kind of common sense thing that we have in our pockets and it's how our society runs. You know, and if we think of thinkers like Karl Polanyi, the great anthropologist, in most societies over most of human history, money and markets were marginal, didn't exist. But we're kind of so used to it as a common sense thing. But it's something that takes over all of life and absorbs all life and kills everything and degrades everything. And if you look at kind of from personal alienation to the assaults on the sort of ecosystems of this planet, that everything is turned into money and killed by money. Um, and yet if you look at the kind of critique of the alternatives, they seem very convincing. I mean, if you, the sort of classic critique of moneyless societies is, you know, von Hayek's article, I think, Problem of, of Knowledge in Society from 1945. And Hayek is very much saying, if you have a plan where people externally plan for the rest of society, that's undemocratic and oppressive. And that, you know, there's this epistemological problem, this problem of knowledge and how do we know, and knowledge is spread through society, and money is a way of coordinating the knowledge, and it's efficient, and so on. But I think, you know, we can turn that on its head. You know, we're all familiar with money as efficient and so on and so forth and all those kind of things. And you just think of speculation. Um, so you think of George Soros, who should know, who made his billions from the most unproductive, exploitative forms of capitalism and currency dealing. And Soros was saying, well, if you marketise society, you destroy society because there's speculation. A good example of this is the British housing market that there are shortages of houses, price of houses goes up, and people buy houses because they're going to go up in price more, because they become speculative commodities. They're no longer to live in. So this spreading of money through society has the potential to kill everything. If we look at ecological problems, we can see them as problems of production and consumption, and that's created by the capitalist system that we produce things and sell those things and buy them and throw them away. And the faster we do that, the more we degrade the environment, but the more profits rise. So that's something, you know, caught up with money and exchange values and capitalism. And instead, as Mark says, if we focus on use values and we make things to last longer and we get our books and libraries and we share things, we can actually have prosperity without degrading ecosystems. 
So I think we need a critique of money and we need a critique of capitalism. And I don't think we should see this as having some kind of grand plan that, where you have sort of thinkers who impose on everybody. And in fact, when you go back to Hayek, that's become what's happened with the market. That you get corporations, they've got more and more power, they manipulate us, and they plan, and they're doing it purely for short-term exchange values. So I think all the sharpest kind of critiques of moneyless societies rebound much more profoundly on the money system we have. And um, there are all sorts of contradictions. And again, the Hayekians would say, you know, don't compare this with a utopian, possible society, perfect society. Okay, there's problems with money. But I, I would say, you know, for moneyless societies and just decommodifying, don't think of something which is perfect, but some, think of something which, we, which works. But to me, the principle is you have democratic ownership of the means of production. And that is just as sensible as political democracy, not that we've got that very much, much of that in Britain. I think one of the things that we need to do is even in the sort of degrading society we have at the moment, you have some democratic, communal, ecological ways of doing things. And you need that moment of actually looking at them, looking what works, what doesn't work, and building on that. However, what money has become in the capitalist kind of context um, and both of you sort of spoke about that in terms of we're talking about all-purpose general money where money stands for the worth of all property and most of the earth now is owned by someone or some organisation and what it's worth is primarily assessed in a comparative way um, in monetary terms and so money has, is really the organising principle of our kind of society. It's really quite different, even though we've had money for centuries and millennia. A lot of those monies that we had before capitalism were specific purpose monies. They only operated within specific spheres. They didn't, for instance, um, impact on the um, property relations between people. And I think that's one of the most important aspects of money as we know it today.